think most of you know Jamie Carden Boone. Uh, she was born in Jackson, went to Northside High School, graduated from the University of Tennessee. Uh, she went to Methodist Hospital School of Medical Technology and worked as a clinical lab scientist for 39 years in Jackson and Memphis. She retired from Jackson General Hospital as a lab director 10 years ago, and her specialties were in uh, special chemistry, immunology, and molecular diagnostics. Maybe I can't even say that, but I don't know what it means. Uh, after she retired, she completed the uh, UT Institute of Agriculture and Extension Office Master Gardener Program. She got interested in family research and joined the DAR in 2015. And Jamie has completed five courses in genealogy that have been offered by the DAR. She's also an avid viewer of genealogy seminars online and attends any kind of workshops that she can when available. For the last three years, she's been a task force volunteer in the DAR, helping solve problem applications that have been denied and finding the needed proof for those people to be accepted. And she's second in her second term as a registrar for the Jackson chapter of NSDAR. And starting next month, she will also be our recording secretary. So, Jamie, we'll turn it over to you. DAR 
through them. So it's a good site. You just may open up your computer and just Google on the name. Put in the name you're looking for. And many times what will come up will be for other people that searched on that name. You might get a link to the find, find your grade, or you, they might bring up. I see a lot of what they call Wiki or Genie uh, will have where other people have logged in family trees. And those can be good for clues. Sometimes, particularly, they give you some sources. You may think, oh, there's a census. Maybe this might, what they have is true. Search books. Uh, you can go up to the Tennessee Room here in the library. If you knew your ancestors from North Carolina, you may find some good books in, on North Carolina. And some of the, the uh, settlers of North Carolina you will uh, find things in books. But you'll have to keep in mind that when you have a problem, not everything <coughs> is online. So you will find yourself in courthouses, archives, libraries, cemeteries, all those problems I saw, most of them were not always on, on, online. I would have to travel. Uh, I've been in the dusty basements of many, many courthouses, crawling around in cemeteries, looking at tombstones. started, develop some kind of way. It may just be a, a notebook that you keep beside you. You may have a, in your computer, develop you some files and say, I'm looking for the Boone family. And I don't, when you find things, you want to save it on the computer. But make notes of what you find. Keep track of where you find it. Um, you can find pedigree charts or family tree programs where you can write things on the chart that helps you keep organized. Note sources as you find them and note where you find them. Remember, and then too, you may go somewhere in one of the repositories and look. New records become available all the time, so it never hurts sometimes to go back. Well, I looked there and they didn't have anything. You might go back to that repository and they say, oh, we've now loaded wheels from a certain time period that we didn't have digitized before. So um, sometimes things do, if you already look somewhere, uh, sometimes new information will come up. You want to pick a good internet genealogy site like Ancestry.com. Everybody heard of Ancestry.com. There is a cost there. Uh, FamilySearch.org is free. <coughs> Ten Tail Info. Now that is the Tennessee uh, technology information database. And up here on this table, see, I'm always passing about. I've got some handouts that uh, you can pick up or you can pass them around. So some of the things you don't have to write down, but there's some little uh, look like this. It's like the state of Tennessee. And this is that they have they give them out here at the library. But through that, you can access a lot of ancestry. When I first started doing my research, I didn't join Ancestry.com for almost 18 months or two years. I got what I needed through the free that the library offered and through Family Search and some of these other things we'll talk about. Uh, Roots Web is a free site and you can put in a search there and you can put in a name and many times some of those people, they'll give you a, a, a list of uh, people who, who have researched that family and you can click on them and some of them will have sources. So they can be a good, a good repository. The U.S. Gen Web Project is free. Find the Grave is free. Uh, the Tennessee State Library Archives. So you can get a lot of things by contacting them. Um, many things that rarely have I had to charge for something. When I run into a wall, I, there's a place you can in, send your email of what you're looking for. And you probably identified a book that uh, you think it's in. And then if you join the library here and get a library card, there are links through the Jackson Madison County Library. Like if you have a library card and you sign in to uh, the libraries, it's not showing you, but you can kind of see the top part. Uh, the West Tennessee Library card you can access remotely 
Uh, they have uh, their departments listed, and if you click on the Tennessee group, it sort of brings this up and will show you what holdings they have. And if something, if you can't access something, you'll get this little pop up that says you have to come to the library for this. But you can get into Family Search. What I use the library link the most for is Fold 3. Fold 3 is where they have military records. And I just have to put in my library card number and I can get into Fold 3 through the library link. So uh, the sites that when we get into Ancestry later, we'll talk about what you can get to through the library. And after a while, uh, they, at 10 o'clock, they didn't want me coming up here in my pajamas and they wanted to research, so it got to where I had to get a subscription to uh, Ancestry. But uh, you can get into censuses through Heritage Quest, so there's uh, a good reason besides all the other wonderful books they have here at the library, they have the library card. One of the sites I've just talked about is, um, you can't see the top of that, but it's the usgenweb.org, the United States this project where they're trying to make genealogy more free on the internet. And you can search it on the state level. It has a great link to vital records, family information. You can select any state and from the state go to the county level. It looks like this when you sign into it. And uh, you just would go down here. If you were interested in Tennessee, you'd click on Tennessee. And it would bring up Tennessee. And it shows uh, all the different counties. We have all the counties in Tennessee listed and you can select whatever county you might be interested in. Recently I've been spending a lot of time in Gibson County for various research and I just, if you bring up Gibson County, you can see over on the side they have a home page and then they can tell you about the county when it was formed. Uh, I selected records and data and it brings up records and data. And these are all of the things that you can find on that site. And many times you'll get lucky. Somebody's written a biography of somebody you're interested in. But they'll have the history. Um, they will have links to some of the sites that we're going to learn about today. Uh, but it's a valuable, valuable resource. Particularly when you go to any state and find out uh, everything you need to know about getting a record or what you might be finding in particular. State. So that, that's all free and a great, great asset. Okay, let's talk about before we get into family search or ancestry, find a grave. Find a grave is free. And you log into the findagrave.com. It's a free site to search. You can search by name if you know if you know the person's name, uh, by cemetery. You may remember as a child going to a cemetery in an area, you remember the name of it, you don't remember what relative was there, buried there. You can go to that cemetery and put in the surname and it'll bring you up all, or you can look at every person buried there if that if that particular cemetery has been cataloged and, and read and, and fed into it. And you possibly can, oh yeah, that's where Aunt Susie was buried. And you can find that, um, that burial site. You'll still need, it will have things there, you'll still need to verify the family list because not everybody, y'all are all going to be genealogy, genealogy growers. You're going to not be just a hunter together. There are people that it's their hobby. They take an obituary and they create a find a great place for, from that obituary with just the information from that. And they'll sometimes go and grab maybe wrong parents or something. So it's one of those things, trust but verify. And you can use the tombstone pictures for information and proof decide to join some kind of lineage society, if it's a tombstone that is correct for that time period, you won't want this beautiful shiny granite that's only been made in the last 10 or 15 years on a somebody buried in 1800 or 1750 that the family put up later. That wouldn't be believed. But if the tombstone is correct for the time period, it can be used as a proof source. So this is sort of what, when you open up find the graves, what it looks like. And I would put in, this is my grandfather, I put in his first name, the last name. I knew this uh, that said year born. Uh, this said year died, and I put in the date. And I knew his, he was buried in Madison County. I could have put other information, but uh, one of our rules we're gonna talk about today, sometimes less is more. You put in too much, 
sometimes and you don't come up with anything. We're going to talk about that. So I put in the very basics and when I break it up, well, there he is. And I wish it wasn't so cut off at the top. But, um, you can, his name, you can kind of see it up there, I guess. He has his name. Uh, when he was born, when he died, um, you come down here and link to it has been his wife, his grandmother, his parents, his children, and his brothers and sisters. And how exciting this is. And I said, you're just name searching on Find the Grave. You come here, and I can click on his grandfather and maybe go back another generation and another generation. And I mean, some of them are well researched. So it is a great place to go and get you some facts. Uh, sometimes you'll find people, you can't see this one. This one is done. This one I know is bona fide, because you may have to read this, but this was created by Kathy Ann Williams. <laughs> 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 so I know it's good and right. Sometimes, you know, it's not anybody related to the family, and you might need to do some checking. And sometimes you will find a tax. See, these are pictures. That's pictures of his tombstones. The Tennessee State Library Archives posted this picture because they had a thing in World War, they wanted everybody to bring in their World War, World War I memorabilia. And so I brought a lot of things to my grandfather's and they took those pictures and they went out and found and they posted this, that picture was one of the pictures I brought. So anyway, you'll find even copies of obituaries sometimes and uh, pictures of family. Uh, my, my mother, they got a picture of her grandmother and we found this one on her find the grave, found that and you know, it, it, uh, it can be real emotional. So find a grave, write that down, that's somewhere you're going to go. Searching in the beginning, less is more. When you start your searches, limit information and if it's too specific and too many details. These are computers and they're looking. If you put in a person's name, the middle name, and everything, and when you think they were born, you might have something wrong in there. If you put in fill in every blank, father, mother, wife, it'll look, I'll find them. If, it, if something is missing, it won't give you anything. So it, you need to be cautious about that. Because uh, you'll think, oh, they don't have anything on that person. And back up and just kind of start with name, a date, and a place. Start with that. Okay. Let's look at family search first. And this is a site. It comes up, looks like this. Search historical records. You can kind of see we're going to have places to put names. There's a scroll bar over here. If you scroll that bar all the way down to the bottom, there are going to be some words, browse all collections. Remember that, everybody. It's going to be like you're at the doctor. You, you know, you have to remember three words. You know, remember, <laughs> browse all collections. We're going to talk about that later. So it looks like that. And up at the top, there is a, a, the tab that says search. And when you click search, it brings you of all these things you can search. Records is where you generally go. Records will search all of their collections. It'll search the images and all the collections they have. Catalog, we're going to talk about. This is what I use the most in family search is catalog. That's where I go to find wills and county specific <coughs> records. Books, it's a great uh, place to find books and you can search the books for the surname. So remember them for books in the research weekly book. I use those three things the most. I tend to like Ancestry simply, I don't know, it's more user friendly, the way they display things, but Facebook <coughs> is very usable as well. So that brings that drop down and we sort of talked about they're going to click on records and it will search all the collections. Like here I put in William Carden. When I was sitting there to make this picture, 
place was Tennessee. The place can be, you might know where they were born or where they died or where they, where they lived. It doesn't, it could be any, any one of the places put there. And when I was typing this for a moment there, I couldn't remember what year he was born. I knew when he died, so I just put in the death, the death date. You could put any date. And I clicked search. Well, this was one of the times, you know, less, I needed more. They broke me up. There are too many William cards, not spelled right. Uh, 131 pages. And uh, okay, I need, okay, how when was he born? So I did add another piece of information. I went over here where I could edit and I put in his birth. And, and then when I entered, then I, you know, had a home run then. I said, sometimes less is more, but sometimes you do need something. You don't have to put, put the father's first name. Uh, the wife's first name, something like that, or a birth year. So then that brought me uh, things that they found on him. There are quite a few records. And uh, and looked over here, well, somebody, not me, has a family tree that involves him. So you'll find that in all the sites. Other people, uh, you'll find your person in other people's family trees because they may have their great-great-grandfather might have been a brother to one of your descendants, and they're building trees, and they'll grab your people. So uh, nobody's getting in your tree, but they are getting in your tree a little bit, and uh, most of what they have will be right, but some of it may not, because you know more about your family. And I could go up here, that census, I could view that census if I wanted to. I could save that census to my computer or print it out. And all these facts I could find on my grandfather just went and did a simple search, put in his name, and there could be pages they would find, if, uh, his marriage record could be there, would find a wealth of information. <coughs> okay, remember our three words. If we scroll down the bottom of that page, there are the words, browse all collections. Everything in family search, everything they have in the, the repository out in Utah, they, they have, I think, everything, and they are the Mecca for the information, but it all goes into some type of collection, and you can just start typing here, and they'll help you out and fill it in. I usually just click browse all collections, and then the next, what I just said, it, it, everything is going to be in some type of collection. When I click that, I put in a state. I'm looking for somebody's records in South Carolina. I would put in a state and or Tennessee, it would bring me up all of the searchable databases would come up that they might have some records. It's really good for important to get four probate searches, marriage records, birth records, a lot of things in one spot. So I come here and I, when I click that browse all collection, it brings this up, I type in Tennessee and they've got 25 collections. And here's a few of them showing up here. I can look up births and christenings from those dates or deaths and burials from those dates. See the little camera over here? That means that's going to be the actual document. You can actually print out the document. Sometimes it might be just an index. But it's a great place. If you haven't found it in Ancestry or you go here, uh, go to your state and they'll tell you what all the collections they have on that particular state. All right, we talked about my other favorite place in family search. Uh, once I, most of the time, I find everything in Ancestry, find the grave, but then when I hit that wall and I'm looking for other documents um, that they don't have a birth certificate or a death certificate and they didn't leave a will, I come here to the catalog in family search. And you can search by place, surname, I rarely do that, titles, author, I rarely do those, I put a place. And then you put in, and the, this is great for international search, if you've got, they, you can put in any country, they have a lot of records for countries too, other countries. But you put in the United States, Tennessee, and here I am in Gibson County again, and I put Gibson. And it brings that, it bring, brought this up here, because there is a Gibson County in Tennessee in the United States, so I say good, I click search, and then it brings me up all of these documents. I mean, it goes, each one of these things would go uh, full page, you click on one, and it brings a drop down. You, you might have a list of cemeteries, some census records, court records. Here's where I usually come for court records. 
wills, chancery court records, where somebody's been named guardian of the child that's been left, or land records are here. So I click on court records, and here's a drop down. And let's say I this time period of, is a time period that I want to look at. I would click on that. Sometimes when you click on them, it'll uh, also might ask you to pick a county and say, well, who, what county or another county if you were just looking at the state. All right, then the, when I click that, it brings this up. So here are all of the documents, the court minutes they have for this time period. And it tells you the film number and the image number, and we've got a camera over there. That means, what that means is I'm going to actually be able to see the record, print it out, save it, do something with it. Sometimes you will have a key above that. If there's a key above it, that means, for whatever reason, those are locked, and you can only see them at the LDS library, or we have a site here in Jackson on oil well, and you can contact them and go there. I have gone there when it's locked and look it up there on the site. During COVID, you, they kept the Wi-Fi signal, you can get in the parking lot with the computer, come out and get on there. But uh, you can go there, and if it's got a key, lock it up. Look, look it up uh, there. Sometimes you'll see something that's kind of a round circle, it looks like a film, you know, the film that would go on a projector, which that means it's on microfilm, and you would have to be in the site, and there again, sometimes you can get to those through the LDS, or you can con contact them to look it up. And I'll have the link where you can do that. I've done that numerous times. They, they answer pretty fast. They always tell you four weeks. And that just depends, I guess, if they have to really look for a long time. But they usually respond pretty fast. So once I pick, and so let's say I'm going to go, this was the right time period. Here's where you need your paper and your notes. Because sometimes I've had to look through all, you know, because it could have been anywhere from 1824 to down here might be the lifespan of that person. I've had to go into all of these. So keep up with where you are. Like I'm going to write down, I'm looking at minutes A or something. I'm write down the film number and go in, start looking. And you have to go cook supper. If somebody's hungry, you can write down where you are and you know where to come back to. So once you click on one, click on one of those things, this is what it brings up. Here are the documents. They're just like, it's just like you were up in the Tennessee room and you're looking at the microfilm and it's just like you're the microfilm reader. So you bring them up. You probably can't tell too much from where you're sitting. These pages up here, this you can tell it's busy. You got writing all on that. The first pages are indexes. And most, I can't say all of them, but a great majority of them have indexes with the person's name. So you can look at the index and if I'm looking for walkers, I would go and find the Douglas. So I click I click on the, the beginning of it first to get a feel for it. See what that says. Is this going, because it said it covered 1824 to 1828. I might find the first set of records are just 1824. That tells me if I really want to be in 1828, I'm going to page down and find 1828. So I come over and I look at the, their alphabetical. If I see that this is A, I know A, B, C, D, F, I can kind of guess where W is going to be, and I would skip on over. And you see this right here, pay attention to this. But I moved over and say I found the letter I wanted to go to, and here are the Bs. And it tells me the page numbers and all these names. I can look through here to see if my name or anyone that I'm looking for is in this database. And it tells me the page number. And you see this grid right here? When you click on this little grid, that grid takes you back to where you see in all the little pages, all the little pages. So if I come here and I see that my person that I'm looking for is on page 46, well then on your grid, if you look at the grid, you see there are 10 things in every row. And I'm here and I think 40, I can go 10, 20, 30, I can kind of guess where I need to go. And not just go page by page by page. So I go and I find, here's my page 
46, the person I'm supposed to is on page 46. This tells me I'm, I'm on 55. It's always gonna be off because they don't count those index pages. So that's, that's cool. I'm on page 46 and here's my document that I'm looking for. I can download it to my computer and save it. I will want to write where I've got this, you know, the source that I'm looking at. And that field number, if I was using this to turn into somebody that's going to look at it, I would write the field number, family search, the years that I found it, you know, write down where you found it if it turned out to be something I wanted to save. And then if it's on, if another one is on more than my pages, I'd go back to my grid <coughs> and go on, skim on down to 200. Make sure you always go, if you're in one of these things and looking, make sure you always get, they always scan in something that says end. And sometimes you can think, well, that's it, there's no more, but always go to you see end. They will break things up into years. But it makes it a lot easier, and then you can keep up with where you are. Now, sometimes you will find that you they aren't indexed, and you've got to look through all the pages. Well, you can keep up, you can look, and you know what page you're on, write it down, the next time, go back into it. You can easily get back to the page where you left and continue searching. But uh, this is where I have found many, many, and solved many, many problems by going and finding land records, or it's the greatest repository for uh, probate records, going and finding your particular county. The other thing that I love that's in Family Search is the Research Wiki. And particularly if you're not familiar, if you're working in a state you're not familiar with, you can bring up the Research Wiki and there's a block that you can just put in. Where do I want to research? You can put any state or country. I can select and just put in Tennessee. And it brings me up the Research Wiki for Tennessee United States Genealogy. And it's going to tell you everything you want to know about doing research in, in Tennessee it will tell you, uh, you know, where you might find birth records, death records, uh, just a whole lot of hints, how to get started. You know, there's some of the things that we, Tennessee Archives is listed there. And it gives you everywhere you need to go. And at the bottom of it, there's a list of all of the counties. And you can select your county. Like I selected Madison County. And when I bring up Madison County, it gets a little more specific on Madison County. It tells you the beginning dates for uh, major records that can let you know if you're wasting time like you may be looking for a death certificate that doesn't exist because they didn't keep you know it, it always helps to know the rules and uh, it's different wherever you're looking up in New England uh, man they had their, they didn't burn their courthouses and they had a lot of records they started things a lot sooner than we did so uh, they had records sooner and right down here it says burned counties it gives you a resource to go to to help you but remember this if you do find out that your county was courthouse was burned this depends a lot of things probably were lost but they had to turn in the records they kept up to the state so it's possible it may have been burned up but maybe the document you're looking for got sent to the state and it's in the tennessee state library archives so before you give up and say, well, it was burned, you know, make a query and see if it's there. And that would be similar for any state you were looking at. They all, every state has a library of archives. So just because it's been burned, all might not be lost. If you want to take a picture of this site here, if you're, if you're on family search and you find a book that they say is locked up, or you can't you want them to do a lookup for you i've used this twice already this month and they've answered very quickly you just that long address or you can search for it on family search you just follow the instructions and i tell them i want you to look in the book of south carolina bibles if you can find a marriage record for so and so and so and so give them enough information that they know you know what you're talking about if it gives you the book number or if it gives you the image number, uh, you know, put in any information that you have. Uh, and you can, they'll do a lookup for you. Okay. Ancestry.com. That's the most popular. It's advertised a lot, and it is very user friendly. But you can build trees in Family Search. You can do just about everything in Family Search, and it is free. Okay, uh, you 
you can access free courses in quite a bit. Like I told you, I went almost two years just using what I could get to through the library, through the tent tail at home. You can, um, that you can then come on in when you get, it would tell you, okay, we've got this document, but you can't see it. I would have to come up here to see the document uh, and use the library. But my cautionary thing there, I mean, it is addictive and before long, if you like it, you will probably subscribe. So, you know, whatever. They run sales and you can get it for six months and find those elusive documents and decide whether you want to renew or not. But the Tennessee Electronic Library, the little thing you can pick up that they give out here, and I got some, a little reminder. You would click on genealogy, and when you click on genealogy, they uh, connect you to Heritage Quest, which, ha which has all the census records. And you can research census records. Uh, they have a great repository of Tennessee records on ancestry. Birth, death, delayed birth records, tax lists, all that can be accessed. You can get to Chronicling America through them and some other uh, newspapers. So there, there's quite a bit that you can get through that Tintail info and get into Ancestry. So Ancestry.com, when you bring it up, it looks like this. It, this is my site, so it, it brings up things about my family. But you have a drop down, just like the other site, search. That's where you go. Play around with the other stuff. You know, they have a lot of classes, and both sites have help things, and so there are a lot of things you can get to. But if you click on search, you get the drop down, very similar, all collections. Or if you just want to look at census records, you could just collect census or birth vital records. You can. I usually have always just all collections. It'll save you time, you look for all, everything you have. Uh, the other thing that I use a lot here, uh, they have a catalog too. The card catalog is a very good resource. We use that, we'll uh, talk about that. But uh, if you just wanted to look at uh, member trees or something specific, you can pick a category. But mostly, you're just gonna go all collections. And you're gonna put in um, a name. Uh, a name I chose, and I think I see in the background, Bradley Bedwin. I work on, I'm trying to help uh, Alice Kane on her application, and I put in the name of the person, Bradley and Bedwin, and what I know, and put in, he didn't, he wasn't uh, born in Tennessee, lived in Tennessee, and the birth year. Always add, unless you know for sure the person's birth year, don't, don't leave it exact. Give some time in it. Who really knew when they were born in 1758? When I'm doing that far, I usually give them 10 years. You know, and I give give some time. Uh, you'll want to click not the exact sound, but you can do just exactly spelled like that, and that's what you're going to get. Or exactly spelled like that, you do exact. Always broaden it where you're doing sounds like and similar, because you're looking at index records sometimes, and off of the census, the way people wrote, they they thought they were saying one name or something or spell it one way, so always go to the sound decks. And I put I put that in, and you know that. Uh, and then this is something else too I want to bring up: wild card search. Honestly, I've never done a wild card search because usually sound decks and similar gets me what I want. But if you if it's some elusive family member you're trying to work on and you have no idea name was spelled so many ways and you're just not sure you could put three stars you've got to have you could put them on the front or the back if you didn't know if they spelled that with m-e-d-l-y-n you could put three stars there and it will bring you up uh, every bradley with the last name that begin with m-e-d you know you can, that's a wild card search if you just are really not sure about the person's name maybe it wasn't what you thought so you can do a wild card Search. So those three stars can be in the front or the back or in the middle. You gotta have some other letters there. So uh, you can do like on the family search a, a full search. You've got all these different places. You can um, add. Okay, I knew where I knew where he was born. Or I knew where he died. Or I know the father's first name. Or I know something about the child. And uh, on the Bradley Medlin, I knew I was trying to prove a child, and so I put the child's name in. It couldn't show in the 
this picture, but I added the child's name in to see if it would get me closer to who I was looking for. And um, it brings up, it's a little cut off, it brings up this gray bean medley. And then here is my Bradley Bedman. He's a Revolutionary War soldier, and so it brought me some of his land application records. And I know I'm the right person, the right track, and here's what a family tree for somebody else has been working on this person. And that's the grandchild of the person. And in this particular case, I'm trying to prove his father is the son of Bradley. And uh, working on that, but it brings up a family tree. And that's great. You're going to look at it. And again, we're going to trust the ver you know, we're going to trust it, but we're going to verify it. When I bring up Bradley that was in that family tree, well, you know, they got a Revolutionary War soldier picture. That, that, that fits. And then see, they've got sources. They've got census records and um, other things that his father might have been. And uh, nobody knows what Bradley's wife was named because she was just the wife that died that he left in 1830 and came to Madison County. So I know I'm kind of on the right track. So you'll have some information when you get here. And you're thinking, oh, that, that is my person. So look at those trees. And look at the sources. Now some, and this one was, was done by a pretty reputable person. Their sources made sense. Um, sometimes I will find, I look at the census, and they just found maybe a census that had a Bradley Medlin in it, and the census was in Connecticut. You know, they didn't pay attention. It was a whole, not even the right state. So look look at what they found, and, um, and it may be something that you want to say that if it is right person, right place. Census records are wonderful when you look at your census records. And I'm sure everybody here has looked at census records at some point. And they're going to give you um, names of your person you're looking for. Um, after a while, they begin to give you uh, relationships. So you can find out where they were born, where their parents were born. Just a whole lot of information on the census records. They help you tell the story of your ancestor. You can verify relationships or find who they were living with. Uh, find out their occupation, whether they could read or write, how far they went in school. Uh, find out where their parents were born uh, and uh, whether or not they were a veteran. Uh, that's asked in the, the 1930 census. Uh, how much they earned. Uh, in 1840, if you're looking in the 1840 census, it'll bring up uh, from 1790 all the way up to 1840, you didn't. You got information of the heads of household. They would just list their name and tick off that you know uh, there was. They were there and they were maybe between 20 and 25 years old. There was a child in the house, a male from 10 to 15, and a female in certain ranges. You don't get a whole lot of real good information, but you can figure out that is my person, and it helps you track that person that you, if you find your person in a particular census, it gives you an idea. Uh, in 1840, though, uh, they were just listing head of household names, but on page two, every page that has a list of people's names, arrow over, and on page two, if there was somebody living in that house who had applied or had a, was a Revolutionary War soldier and a pensioner in that house, it, it asked that, is there a Revolutionary War pensioner in your house in 1840. And you might find the name of that person's grandfather, father, somebody living in that house who, and it gives you a clue and a connection to a Revolutionary War soldier. It wasn't until 1880 that uh, family relationships were finally identified where they would say that this person is the father, you know, or that this was the head of household, this is his wife, this is his son or daughter. So the other ones, uh, 1850, uh, they listed all the names finally, and 1860 and 1870. Why they didn't put one more column and say, I don't know why they waited until 1880, because those censuses, sometimes when you're looking at those, they're, they're good and it most likely is a family unit, but you kind of have to look for consistency because sometimes that person in there I found sometimes was a nephew that they took in. It wasn't their son or daughter. It, and not, you know, it doesn't, it 
it's frustrating, you pretty much know that it's true, so what you have to do is maybe you hopefully find them again in an 1860 census, or you'll look at those people and um, find death records, and there may be death records. I, sometimes I can't find the person's death record that I'm looking for, but his older brother or his younger sibling lived long enough to get a death certificate, and they name the parents, and I can show them as a, as a, as a unit. So, there is ways around it. But in 1900, uh, it's a good census. If you don't know, you can't find a tombstone for somebody and they lived and they could be found in 1900. In 1900, they asked you what month you were born in and what year. So you can use that as a, a good uh, clue to find uh, for someone that you've not been able to find a tombstone on. Card catalog and ancestry. Uh, it's, it's a great place to look for a collection. If you are specifically looking for something, you're trying to find somebody's will or marriage record, you're trying to find a Revolutionary War soldier, uh, if you're looking for something specific, the card catalog and ancestry, a newspaper, or whatever. When you go into it, like here I just uh, started type, I typed uh, Tennessee. And you don't even have to complete the word. It starts giving you hints. Oh, Jamie's looking for Tennessee wheels again or something. It just starts, it'll start bringing you up things that start or have Tennessee in them. And this is many times where I'm going, Tennessee wheels and probate. Um, sometimes I'm looking at the early land registers. I don't ever look at this, but I thought that was curious that you can find the Memphis, Tennessee arriving passengers and crew manifest of airplanes from 1956 to 1961. Well, it, that's just kind of interesting. That if you if you think you got you know somebody that was with somebody that oh look they were on that plane. I don't know. I haven't looked at it, but I thought that was a curious bit of database that they had. Uh, and then you can find the Tennessee Valley Cemetery relocation files if you got somebody caught up in the relocation of the Tennessee Valley. You know, uh, it just type in something. Uh, you can't see the keyword I typed in, but it was north. Uh, what I usually go for a lot is North Carolina and Tennessee U.S. Revolutionary War land, war land wars. But you can just type in Revolutionary War or Revolutionary, and then you get hundreds and hundreds of collections from all the different states and rosters. In there. So just use it like a little, like a little research. Thing, type in and you'll see what collection they have. Don't start it too late at night. A rabbit hole that you don't get out of at so three in the morning. But, uh, right. it's, a, it's, a, it's a fun place because you can find a little too much. So that, that first part is just um, how to get in and sort of how to search. And I don't know, maybe most of you probably have, have searched in. Um, Family search or ancestry, and I hope I didn't bore you with how to search details. Uh, the next part here, and then we'll kind of sum up with my approach, uh, are some great databases. And don't worry about trying to. Uh, there's a handout that I think I've got it. You can pass them around if you want to. Uh, they have the web addresses, so you don't have to try to write them down if you're interested. And on the back is uh, something that I refer to a lot. It's, uh, on the back of it, you've got a thing that tells you the birth, marriage, and death availability for all of the states and territories in the United States. Kind of gives you a little clue for if you might find a record or not. But uh, there's a, a lady um, that I follow a lot, listen to, a Shannon uh, Bennett Combs. I watch a lot of her uh, webinars through uh, Family Tree. And um, she had this database, and some of you'll know about some of them. Some of them are just fun, but they're, uh, we talked about books, and most of you have probably, archive.org is the great repository of all digital books online. And I'm sure you can download pages of interest, you can search for the name of interest. Um, when you do find a book, and you find something in it, always copy that cover page and title. If it's something you think you're gonna want to prove and use, you will, uh, wherever you submitted, you will know where did you get this? You know, did you just type this up? Uh, you'll want the source of thing. So if you find something in archive.org, uh, and there are added trust, there are other 
resources. The World Cat, if you're looking for a book, go to World Cat. I'll tell you where you can find the book in the library close to you. But uh, the interesting thing about the archive.org, I never paid attention to it, and I learned from watching her uh, talk. I never paid attention to the Wayback Machine. Or what that was. Just, just I would go always right here, put in the name of the book I was looking for, and I'm off looking at the book. Well, the Wayback Machine, you know how you, if you have, you know, until people, you caution them, be careful what you put on the internet or be there forever, you know, it, it will be there forever. But how many of you have been doing research for a long time and you used to go to a site, you know, Susie Q's Genie site, and it had all kinds of good stuff, and you maybe copied something from it, and you got it, and then later you kind of, where did I get that? You go back to that site, and it's no longer there. Well, the Wayback Machine is a record of old URL address sites. So if you've got an old site that you used to go to and want to go back and find it, it may not be maintained anymore. That person may have reformatted it, gave it another name, or that person may have died and it's just sitting there. So after so long of inactivity, they go where you can't just Google them and find them. But you can um, search with a keyword, or if you still have that old URL address, uh, you might actually find something that you had lost or you, want, you wanted to go back to that site to see where they found it. So I thought that was cool. I didn't know what the way back machine was. So usually nothing really ever disappears on the internet. The American Battle Monuments Commission, abnc.gov, that is a, a site that's responsible for overseas cemeteries and burial searches can be performed, similar to a sort of like find a grave, but you can find where someone, if you have a, a family member who's been, died in, in the war, any war, and they're buried overseas, you can find their record, their rank, their unit, their state, where they enlisted. Uh, you can find that on this American Battle Monuments Commission site. Uh, the Atlas of Historical County Boundaries. This is maintained by the Newberry Library. And it's sort of a one-stop place for historical boundary changes in towns and counties. It has an interactive map. Because sometimes you gotta keep in your mind when you're searching for somebody, okay, this person, I know that they live in Crockett County. And they never left Crockett County. But sometimes they may not have never moved, that house didn't move an inch, but it was Crockett County, Gibson County, and another county at some point. So it may be uh, helping you figure out, ah, oh, that was, it's now Gibson County. Maybe I need to look in Gibson County for the birth record of this person or marriage record or something. So it's good to look at things like this so you know about the area where you're looking that maybe, and I mean, I usually, if I've got a problem, I look at every county that I think that person could get to for records, because you never know that they, how close they live to the county line. That's a fun site. The Bureau, I spend a lot of time in Lane, you know. It always goes back to the Lane. And the Bureau of Land Management, the, and it's the, I call it the Glow Records, you're probably familiar with that, you've been to those. It's a record of public selling of federal lands from 1788 to the present. And if you, you go into it, something that I had never done until I watched her site, I would go in usually put in the name I was looking for, and I would find the land record and print out the patent image, told them what I wanted to know, but I had never clicked on it and gone on further to look at the related documents. And what it can tell you, like this one, I'm looking at Moses McWhorter. I don't know who had me looking at McWhorter's. <laughs> Janita back there. So I'm looking, and this will tell what it tells me. It's sort of the history of that piece of land. I can see where James McWhorter was on it before. All the people, you can find the people. And so sometimes it can help you connect a father and son or something. But if you so if you pick your person, if it, if it comes up, when you bring them up, click on it, click on a number, and it will give you the history of that particular land and under related documents. So, you know, sometimes I don't know why we're afraid to click on things, but I'm gonna break anything. But, you know, click around, and they, they do have a good help site there. But it will let you know who all had owned the piece of land where your family wound up. The National 
National Park Service, you can't see the top of that, but it says National Park Service website on Civil War soldiers and sailors. Maybe you can't, you want to get into poetry or something and you're thinking well, so-and-so was fought in the Civil War on the Union or the Confederate side. They have uh, battle regiment information. So you can uh, enter a name, if you know the name, and it will bring up that person's record, or you can just scroll through till you can get in the alphabet and search what you're looking for, you can scroll through. And the cemetery section of the National Parks website will tell you, if you know you have someone buried in the National Cemetery, it has an index of where they're buried in the National Cemetery. So that's kind of an interesting fun site. I'm sure if any of you, if you've done any military research, you've gone to the NARA, the NARA National Archives. And when you go into that, you can, uh, I usually go archive.gov, research, genealogy, and I'll follow the site to the archival databases. When you click genealogy, it goes to the archival databases. And when you click on that, uh, down, when you click on the genealogy portion, down on the, to the, just below here, it says link to the archival databases, access to archival databases. You don't have to go to the narrow. There's a lot of things online you can get to. You pick your war of interest, like uh, I picked World War II, I was interested, I had an uncle uh, was married to my dad's sister, and he was a prisoner of war in World War II in Germany. And I found his, they had the prisoner of war records there, and I found the stall log that he was in, and they told what stall log he was in, in Germany. So if you've got to uh, get into the access of the archival databases through the NARA, and if you can look up your military person's record. I use this site when the uh, not too long ago, we were working in the Bemis Cemetery and trying to identify people that had been, uh, whether it's not everybody had a military marker, I put in names of the men of the right age for World War I. We were trying to World War II, trying to find people, and I could find whether or not they had a military record. The CDD, CDC site, I'm going to work by the sick of CDC and COVID, and you know, but they are not, they're a little more than just health, but on the CDC, site, they have a where to write section, CDC, NCH, W2, where to write index, and they have information on where to obtain vital records for every state and territory. It's just another place. I, I thought that was just interesting. I didn't know that they kept up with that, but it can give you a place to call. I used it last, not didn't have to use the site because I went into my family search or the U.S. Gen Web. A lot of people uh, get married in Corinth, Mississippi, and, and I was there. I called them. They're so nice there. The circuit court said that I needed a marriage record. And she mailed it to me, and I got it yesterday. And I just called her last week. So uh, never be afraid to call these places. You know, someone will be rude. Okay, you know, whatever. Just if you're having a bad day. But most of them are very nice, and they will look up and find things for you that you can't bring up online. Uh, the United States Census. Census.gov history. Uh, there's a lot of information on that site of recent and historical census records. Uh, but there are two tabs to really check out through the decades. It just tells you all about every census and a lot of facts. What's, what were the questions they asked? What was the history behind? Why did they ask that question? But uh, under genealogy, there are two little tabs. And the city old census. It gives you something that you didn't know you could get, at least I didn't know you could get. If you click genealogy, there was some stuff in other resources that was not very interesting, but under the Seminole Census Records, it will tell you, it used to say from 1950 to uh, 2020, it tells you how you can get an unreleased census. If you are on the census, or you are the heir of somebody on the census, if you have a burning desire to get the 1960 census, you fill out form BC 600. You gotta want it, it is several pages to the form, but if, there, if, there, if it solves some problem for you, you can get an unreleased census. It would just be the page where you are by filling out that form. I never knew that. We were all waiting for the 1950, mostly because we were curious and we wanted to see if you thought you were, you know, if you were in it or 
from your family, but you can get an unreleased census. And then the United States Citizenship and Immigration Services. If you uh, have deceased family members who came and immigrated here, uh, those records, there's so much more in those records that doesn't show in any other search thing. They, they, will, they ask those people, oh, you know, who is your parents' names, where you came from, there's a lot of other information there. You will see, when you go into this site now, you will see a flag on it. Uh, the Senate has already told them that they were wrong and they passed a bill, you can't do this. The Congress has to approve it. But they were had upped their charges to get these records 600%. And they said, well, that's a violation, you can't do that. So right now, you, I wouldn't order one. It's, it's sort of under, you know, wait till the Congress says they can't charge you that much for it. All right, so now you're all genealogists and you're searchers. What's your approach gonna be? Are you gonna be a hunter-gatherer, just finding names and dates? Are you gonna be a grower? You're gonna develop the story, keep records, and locate proof of your findings. And what are you gonna do first? You start in one of those friendly, usable lineage sites. Uh, ancestry, family search, ancestry that you can get to through the library. The U.S. Gen Well used to suggest that they will suggest family trees to you. You look at those. Uh, they'll and also what they'll do when you find your person and you click on it, look on the screen. It'll say, "Hey, look over here. Here are some suggested records. Here's a marriage record for Brad and Here's you know here's some other records for you to look at." So they do a lot of work for you, both sides. Uh, find vital records. Look for records of siblings. If you're having a problem finding your person. Find some things on the siblings, and it can help you uh, complete your records. <coughs> and uh, another thing to remember, uh, this right here, the record that's closest to the time of the event is usually the most accurate. Then that makes sense. We've all looked at death certificates, and death certificates are only ever as accurate as the informant who was given the information. The death dates usually right, because that's just happened. But if they, if it was some nephew or someone, whoever was given it, they may have got the birth year wrong. And most of them weren't very close. They didn't know the main name of the mother. So there will be errors on death certificates. Uh, birth records, you know, the mother's present, she signs her name, and the, the, the man who's enrolling in the draft, he's gonna know his birth date, he was there. Records about births and things, and parents on marriage records, uh, sometimes when you, some of the records you'll find with marriage records, always look at all the pages that are in that block of information because some of them will give you, they have to write their parents' names and their birth dates. So, you know, anything close to the time when it happened is gonna be the most accurate. Track your ancestor. Find all the, where they are in all the census records, tax records, that's gonna tell you, okay, this is my person because he would've, he's paying taxes, he would've had to have been 21, so this is him. Or if you find a record, well, that couldn't be that person because he couldn't have been uh, paying taxes. Look at the land. Uh, there's a great site, Path of the Patriots, uh, on the TSLA site. Uh, city directories that will tell you where they live. The military records in Fold 3 are go find the Revolutionary War application. Uh, Revolutionaryworapps.org, you can find their, where they apply for the pension. And many times they tell the names of their children, their wives, they'll tell you where they were born, where they lived, where they enlisted. Uh, so always go, if you're looking at that, uh, if they were a Revolutionary War pensioner, uh, they will have a lot of information and there'll be a lot of information sometimes from people who apply for Civil War pensions. The Tennessee site, I love Tennessee State Library Archives. They're very helpful if you want them to look up something in the book, but they have this site for following the Patriots, half of the Patriots. And uh, this was a problem uh, application that I did on uh, for somebody trying to join the DAR under Aaron Gage. And he wound up being buried in, uh, in Tennessee, dying in Tennessee, but he was from New Jersey. And a lot of soldiers at that time went down to Georgia. There were a lot of people first enlisting. He did go and enlist in Georgia. If you click on any one of these little colored circles, it will tell you where, where in New Jersey that was, where he was in Georgia. 
then after the war, he was in North Carolina for a little while, then he went up into Kentucky, and then he came down to all these counties in Tennessee. So it gave me all those places that I finally found records in Kentucky for the child in, that he had, because he was a lot of traveling around in there, and the person that I was trying to connect him with, I finally found him in Kentucky. It, it let me know, you know, where, where I might uh, track him, and it makes a nice pretty graphic to include in the application too, you know, <laughs> uh, or something that uh, really shows where you've been. But, and another thing, Sound 
But if you haven't convinced yourself yet that it's right, you're probably not going to convince anybody else. So you might need to work on it a little more. DNA, that's a, going to be a new source. Tomorrow we may find that with the use of DNA, some of our sound conclusions may be wrong. Or we may find that there were accurate conclusions. Get started, have fun, go crazy. This will be you. Somebody will be coming and telling you it's two in the morning, come to bed. Genealogy is my pastime. I shall not stop. It may be to lie down and examine half buried tombstones. It leadeth me into steel courthouses. It restored my ancestral knowledge. It leadeth me in paths of census records and ships passenger lists for my surname's sake. Yea, though I walk through the shadows of research libraries and microfilm readers, I shall fear no discouragement, for a strong urge is with me. The curiosity and motivation that comfort me. It demanded preparation of storage space for the acquisition of countless documents. It anointed my head with burning midnight oil. <laughs> my family group sheets run it over. Surely, birth, marriage, and death date shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of a family history seeker forever. Anybody <laughs> <laughs> have any questions? Or I'm sure y'all have a, a favorite site or something that, that and there's so many more. I kept having to finally just come on here early. I kept going up and adding something to this. Um, yeah. Jamie, when you were showing the Patriots path, uh -huh. Patriot path, mm -hmm. what what site was that on? That's on the Tennessee State Library Archive. Okay. And they have a section under it says other online resources. And they've got several things. Jamie, I know that that was a lot for some of us, but I would say that 75 or 80 percent of what I use is Family Search. Yeah. And you put up two or three things up there tonight on Family Search that I didn't know I could do. Yeah. 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 yeah it's, there it's there were things you showed on Family Search that I didn't know yeah. about, and I'm on it almost every day. In yeah. I'll tell you but what I, I think I'm about to clear up a couple of roadblocks because of her. <laughs> well, I hope so. I hope so. Um, so, so I think even if, you know, if those are sites that everybody was familiar with, if you weren't familiar with them, if it's a lot, but if you are, I would think that there were probably some little things in there to, uh, yeah, the Gretna Green I had never heard of. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's interesting that for Southwest Tennessee, it says to check out Utah, Mississippi. Uh -huh. Brenda and I went to the library in Florence, Alabama about a month ago, mm -hmm. and I overheard the guy in the research room telling the lady there, well, if you can't find it, look at Iuka, Mississippi, because right. that's where everybody from Florence okay. used to go to get married. Uh -huh. And I told him that in West Tennessee, they went to Park, right. and he said, that's interesting to know, I'll pass that along. Yeah. Up in East Tennessee, Floyd County, Rome, in Georgia, that's where they would go in East Tennessee. So, you know, that's, that's an interesting thing. And just, you know, in, in that research we you know, Get something in your mind and type it in. You just never know what you're going to find. Yeah. On the Bureau of Land Management, that's where I found my great great grandfather's middle name because mm -hmm. I found his land grant. At every other place I found his first name, middle initial, last name, but his document had his right. full name on it. Yeah. There's a, a lot of good things, and sometimes you got it like in the wheels and the probates. You've got to go years. Sometimes it can be 10 years before the state is finally settled. And sometimes in that last record is where something comes up that they finally say somebody is somebody's son. On Family Search, uh, under activities and things, you can get into, they have a lot of videos, little five minute how to click things. And what I do when I'm on my main computer and I have my iPad, and if I'm in one of those white room things and I've got to page through, thousand pages to try to find this document I'm looking for. I put up a webinar because you're just sort of you're scrolling and you're looking for names and we'll listen to these little five minute things so you can learn. There's a lot of things, real quick uh, things that you can learn. But that grid thing and searching on the thing, it saves me a lot of time. Well I hope you all enjoyed it and happy searching. Thank you.